Brandon, we're here to talk about Antiviral, your first feature film. And it's a film, I believe, that you had the idea for when you were sick, didn't you? Tell me about that. Uh, yeah, I, I started writing it in 2004. And, uh, I had a bad flu. I was at film school and, and I was sort of obsessing over the, the, the physical nature of my illness and uh, how I had something in my body and in my cells that had come from someone else's body and how that was sort of a, a weirdly intimate thing, if you, if you think about it that way. Um, and then I tried to think of a, a character who might see disease as something intimate. And I thought maybe a celebrity obsessed fan might want, you know, Angelina Jolie's cold as a way of feeling physically connected to her. And it developed from there into what I thought was uh, an interesting metaphor for talking about that culture. I mean, did the fact that, I guess, your dad, um, David Cronenberg, has obviously made loads of movies over the years, has worked with lots of big actors, that you had that kind of sense of that world of maybe seeing how people are around celebrities and that kind of celebrity obsession or culture, as it were. Yeah, for sure. I mean, one of the, the themes in the film is that uh, divide between celebrities as, as cultural constructs, as media constructs, and then the, the human beings who are sort of unrelated to, to those, you know, the fictional characters, I guess. And, um, and that it's not a novel observation that the real people are different from their public personas, but I, I guess when you're exposed to that uh, personally and, and you know people who who are living that, that life, it's still pretty shocking somehow. Yeah. I suppose in a way celebrity culture, somebody obsession or that myth of celebrity as well isn't something new exactly, is it? it's kind of existed for many years. But I guess what you're saying in the film and, and what is apparent in, in life we live now is that it's gone to a new extreme in a way, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's. I think it's always been fairly extreme, you know. And I, I think it, it, in a sense, connects to a broader human impulse to deify people. You know, I think the you look at the saints. There's you know, people elevated to the status of gods, essentially, with the same. And there's the same physical fetishism. You know, finger bones. The old churches claim to have the finger bones of a particular saint. Or um, so I think it's always. It's it's always been there, but definitely, I think now the rate at which we consume media um, it produces celebrities very quickly and increasingly for no reason. I mean, people there are people whose jobs are just to be famous, kind of in a sense, and I think that industry is getting uh, more and more insular and more unrelated to, to anything else. It's interesting because obviously in the film it takes it to an utter extreme, doesn't it? You know, you're injecting, people are getting injected with celebrities' colds and various infections and things like you said yourself. And there's, you know, people eating um, celebrity cell steak, so steaks made out of the cells from celebrities. So obviously a little bit beyond where we are now, I think. What's the worst real life example you think you've come across of that excessive celebrity culture? Uh, I'm not I'm not sure what the worst is really um, for a while some people were reporting that my sister dated Rob Pattinson which I thought was really weird there's actually a, a magazine I saw out of Australia that like photoshopped them together and as though they were attending a party together and there was this weird so like I don't know if that's the worst example but it was weird because it was so obviously not true and not related to anything but it's just like you know if there's a story there it's you know no one hesitates to create something totally fictional just to cause controversy let's talk a little bit about the look and the style of the film as well because it's very distinctive isn't it tell me about where you got the idea to kind of to film it in that very particular kind of clean white washed looking way uh well there's sort of two i mean there's the very sterile aspects of the film in the production design and, and in the shooting and then there are the more dirty grimy elements, the butcher shop and the, you know, the macroscopic bodily stuff. Um, so I guess it was just, uh, well, part of the, the whiteness of it, I guess, was an interesting way to control the eye of the viewer. So if you have a completely white frame in the clinic, say, and then you have um, these, uh, the celebrity faces on the walls, it lends them a certain weight, a visual weight, or, you know, blood pops against a white background and so there's a blood theme throughout the film and so the blood ends up having this significance but also it's that um again the the divide between the icon the inhuman the sort of theoretical 
people, the celebrities as those characters, and then the real animal body that's decaying and, and living and dying beneath that. Um, I wanted to represent that in the in the design and in the look. So those two elements are represented and then kind of collide towards the end. You've got an incredible young actor in the lead role, haven't you? Tell me about how you found him. Uh, well, I mean, I had I had seen him in X-Men. He was in X-Men uh, first class and um, was also the kid at, on a bike at the end of No Country for Old Men. Um, but I, I hadn't been thinking of him until we started looking for actors and then I saw a reel of uh, work that he had done and we all got very excited about him because he's you know, a great actor and has that special interesting thing that some actors have that that fascinating screen quality uh, and he was a very nuanced physical actor and we needed that so um, uh, so we got excited about him and then he was reading the script and he flew to Toronto to, to talk with us about it and it came together very quickly at that point. And tell me a little bit as well about the inspirations that you've had for your particular style of filmmaking. So as we say, it's your first feature, this one. Mm -hmm. So who's been really having an influence on you so far? Um, I'm not sure exactly, to be honest. I know I've been influenced by a lot of people, but it's all sort of indirect because I wasn't specifically trying to, to emulate anyone. Um, we all, during pre-production, got very excited about the film Dogtooth um, and, and Alps, his, his mm -hmm. next film. Um, but I don't think those influences really were too visible uh, in the final film. I wanted to ask as well where you thought the celebrity obsession that we see in Antiviral might end eventually. Um, God, I don't know. I don't, it's hard to say where culture is going. Maybe we'll destroy civilization and then, you know, people will still be famous for various things. I think... Uh, I don't know if it's inherent to to who we are. I don't think much is inherent to who we are, but I think again it's it's tied to that religious impulse. I, I think the uh, desire to kind of ele elevate people and, and to tear them apart is, is something that we have generally as a species. So um, I don't know what's in store for us, but uh, I imagine there'll be more of that in some form. And uh, the idea of the, the celebrity um, cell stakes as well, wh how did that come to you? Because it's so kind of gruesome in a way, isn't it? Right. Uh, well, it's based on real technology. I mean, um, they are developing cell, cell stakes, uh, not human cell stakes, but cow cell stakes and, um, based on muscle cells. They're cultivated. and um, So we will probably see grown meat on the market in, within the next decade. It's very close to being... I mean, it exists, but it's just still too disgusting to really market to people. Um, so it was just a small jump to imagine human stakes, and then that became a good way to have them literally consume celebrities. And of course, you've got that mass outpouring of grief for somebody who essentially nobody really knows actually in real life mm -hmm. in the film, don't you, which we, we, we kind of see so often in real life as well don't we is that kind of where you took the inspiration for that from and were you thinking of anyone in particular uh yeah no i mean it's the way uh, some of the dialogue is lifted almost exactly from from the news i was look, researching various celebrity deaths um one of the characters is uh, is partly my grandmother because <laughs> she she really likes is interested in royalty and and so um uh, but yeah, I think it's just it's just that people feel very invested in, in these in these people who they're not they don't know personally, but they feel they have a, a personal relationship with them, and that's a lot of the film. It, it's just, it's almost in some ways a, a one sided love story, um, which I think a lot of people experience. What can we expect from you next, now, Random? Um, well, I'm uh, trying to write something, and, and hopefully I'll have another chance to make a film, but. Still, still in the early stages. What kind of is there a genre or a kind of tack that you're hoping to take with it? Um, I'm not specifically aiming for one genre, but I do. I mean, this sort of sci-fi horror film thing that that I did with Antiviral is still. Uh, I, I find that an interesting way to talk about certain things. So I think it, it might have some of those qualities to it, but I'm not totally sure yet. I'm still playing around.